So, we will discuss now one another important topic which is shear center. In the last lecture we discussed about or last few lectures we discussed about plastic analysis and design and we also discussed about the theories of failure as discussed by as given by five different theories. For understanding let us do quickly two numerical examples design examples on different theories then we will move on to the shear center which is an important topic as far as thin asymmetric sections are concerned. We will tell you why it is important and how that is predominantly important as a designer for marine structures ok. Let us see that, but before that let us do one design example using different theories. Let us say the maximum principal stress of a member is given as 200 Newton per mm square tensile and the minor is maximum and the minor sigma is not known. But the nature is compressive. If sigma y p of the material is 300 Newton per mm square, same in tensile and compression, fine the minor principal stress using different theories or file. Now, take mu for the material as 0.25. So, following theory should be used maximum strain theory maximum shear stress theory total strain energy theory and maximum distortion theory. Read the problem, think it for few minutes, let us see how we will solve this problem. You have the governing equations of all the theories I gave you in the previous lectures, please turn them back and be ready with the equations and read the problem, what is given and what is asked and how do we handle this problem. So, let us say for maximum strain theory. in a biaxial stress state see I have deliberately made these two stresses of different nature ok, because one is tensile other is compression. So, I am looking for quadrants of 2 and 4 ok. So, it can give me a good difference I am deliberately made this just as a choice for the problem. So, let us see how they are varying ok. So, for the maximum strain theory in a given biaxial stress state, what is the control equation? Can you give me the equation? Is this the equation? Sigma 1 minus mu sigma 2 sigma y p ok and already we know that sigma 2 is compression that is an indication given in the problem. So, I should say sigma 1 plus mu sigma 2 now is sigma y p because this is minus of minus and you know sigma 1, you know sigma y p, you know mu. Can you find sigma 2? So, this is 200 plus 0.25 of sigma 2 is 300 
which gives me sigma 2 as 400 ok. That is one answer it is compressed. B maximum shear stress theory. According to this theory, what is the control equation? Minus sigma two is sigma one. Is it not? So for my problem, sigma two being compressive. which gives me sigma 2 as simply 100 ok compressive is it not Let's take away this now total strain energy theory What is the control equation? Sigma 1 square minus 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2 is sigma y p square. Am I right? You know everything, solve the quadratic and get me sigma 2. So, for sigma 2 being compressive, sigma 1 square, sigma 2 square, 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2 is sigma y p square. Now, what was sigma 1 value? 200 can you find sigma 2 solve the quadratic and get me the value it is 179 point 13 compress okay look at the fourth one maximum distortion theory according to this theory the control equation is sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square yeah minus sigma 1 sigma 2 good is y p square is it not. So, sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma y p square. So, 200 square plus sigma 2 square plus 200 of sigma 2 is 300 square which gives me sigma 2 as 144.95. Can quickly see the discrepancies. Okay. Since sigma two is compressive, all these values will lie in which quadrant of your stress theory? Sigma two is compressive. Sigma two is compressive. Sigma one is tensile. Which quadrant? This is my stress state, okay. Sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 2 is negative. So, I am in the fourth quarter. So, as expected, the variation between the values are significantly high, okay. So, design is very alarming. Second example. This is more alarming. I will show you an example now. Compare the permissible diameter 
of a shaft. I have a shaft, I want to check the diameter of the shaft subjected to torsion. taking mu as point t. Use the following theories, one maximum principles as theory, two maximum strain theory, three maximum shear stress theory, four maximum strain energy theory. So, I have a shaft whose diameter is d the shaft is subjected to torsion or twisting moment m t, twisting moment m t. Let us say this is the diameter of my shaft, okay. I want to estimate the diameter of the shaft, the design problem based on the following theories. So, all should estimate give me the same value or more or less a Similar value, let us see what happens when we use different theories. Let us say, for example, take up the maximum principle stress theory. Before that, before that, let us say sigma y p in tension is the same as sigma y p in compression. So, the maximum principle stress theory says sigma 1 is equal to sigma y p is it not that is the max irrespective of other state of stresses when the maximum principal stress reaches yield point failure has started that is what the theory says. According to maximum strain theory what is the equation maximum strain theory is this the equation maximum strain theory then maximum shear stress theory that is stress cos is this the equation is it right or wrong then according to the maximum strain energy theory Okay. Now, for a pure shear case as in this problem sigma 1 equals sigma 2 will be equal to tau, so shear stress pure shear case. Hence, The equations 1 can be rewritten as tau y p is sigma y p this for the maximum principle stress theory. tau y p 
is sigma y p by 1 minus mu that is for the maximum strain theory. Now, in this case, they are of a different nature, so it will become 1 plus, okay. they are of a different nature, it will become 1 plus. So, for maximum shear stress theory, tau y p will be sigma y p by 2. And for this case, tau y p will be sigma y p by root of 2 of 1 plus mu. Is that okay? Again, different nature, between different nature, so plus root because I am talking about squares. Now, I have the value of mu. I have the value of mu. Can you just tell me what are these values? Equivalently, after substituting for mu, because mu already have as 0.3, can you tell me these values? So, this is going to be simply sigma y p, no change in this, that is tau y p, and in this case, tau y p will be equal to 0.769, and in this case, tau y p is equal to 0.5 and in this case tau y p is equal to 6. remove this. In the case of design of circular shafts, the permissible stress which I say tau w is given by tau w is tau y p by some factor of safety, is it not? For torsional moments, is also equal to stress by torsion for torsional moment is also equal to 60 m torsion by pi d 1 q. How do you get this? How do you get this? What is the control equation for bending and what is the control equation for torsion? What is the control equation for bending? m by a stress by y is e by r. Control equation for torsion? T by J is stress by Y max, is it not? So, T is empty, J is polar moment of inertia for a circular shaft. What is polar moment of inertia? Polar moment of inertia for a circular shaft. What is moment of inertia for a circular shaft? Pi d power 4 by 64. What is polar moment of inertia? 32, half of that. Okay. I am talking about y also, which is d by 2, I get 16. Is that clear? So, now let us find out this equation. I will call this as equation number, let me call this equation number 3. 
we have missed out some number in between this is 3 okay, that can be 2 or whatever maybe. So, now I have tau y p by factor of safety is 16 m t by pi d 1 q or simply d q let us say pi d q. Okay. Now, this tau y p is different for different theories for principal stress it is sigma y p directly for maximum strain it is 0 0.769 for the other theory it is 0 0.5 and the fourth one it is 0.62 I will keep on substituting and find keep on different diameter and compare can you give me what is the diameter as per the first theory. So, let us write down the equations first 16 mt for maximum principal stress theory 16 mt by pi I call this as d 1 just for me understanding d 1 q is sigma y p by factor of safety I call C equation 4 a I mean is it ok for maximum strain theory sixteen mt by pi d two q is point seven six m I am taking point seven six sigma y p by factor four b for Okay, let us compare these two quickly. Can you compare 4 a and 4 b and get me the relationship between d 1 and d 2. By comparing 4 a and 4 b. See if I if I bring this multiply here these two equations can be equated is it not. So, you have got a ratio of d 1 by d 2 is it not give me that ratio. So, d 1 by d 2 will become 0 0.913 that is d 1 is to d 2 is 1 is to yeah 1.09 is it right 1.0 0.95. Okay. The diameter suggested by the maximum strain theory for this problem is about 1 point about 10 percent more than the diameter suggested by maximum principal stress theory that is what we are meaning. The diameter recommended by the maximum strain theory is about 10 percent more about 10 percent more than the diameter suggested by the maximum principal stress theory. Okay. Now, let us do for the third case that is for what is the third theory maximum shear stress theory. So, let us say 16 m t by pi d 3 q and this was 0.5. I call this is 4 c. Now, compare 4 a and 4 c. I am comparing this with this. So, can you give me the ratio between d 1 by d 3? So, this says d 1 is to d 3 is 1 is to the proportion is 1.26 is very high is about 26 percent higher. Okay. When you use this theory for design I will rub this I will retain it here I will rub this for St 
chain energy theory please do not mind my shorthand here um, ok I think you can write it for total strain energy theory 16 m t by pi d 1 q or d 4 q yes 0.62 is it so I call this 4 d now comparing equation 4 d with 4 a we get d 1 is to d 4 as 1 is to 17 percent. So, I should say d 1, d 2, d 3, d 4 or in the relationship of 1 is to 1 1.09, 1 1.26, 1 1.17. So, that is amazing ok. Simple theory, simple problem give different dimensions for the design ok. This is where the design is getting deviated by different design engineers by following the same analysis and design for example, plastic design. So, if you choose any wrong <coughs> theory applicable to your problem you will land up in a wrong diameter simple example ok. So, we have to be very careful in understanding the failure behavior based on these theories. Let us talk about shear center. Any questions here? Are we understanding the importance of this problem? We have demonstrated how the diameter selection can be or chosen can be varying by using different theories on a simple problem like this. Okay? So, even there exists uncertainties on the theory suggested by the literature. Okay? Therefore, our original argument of limit state design or ultimate limit states being probabilistic, non-deterministic is all justified ok, because we cannot land up in a single unique answer even the theory suggests different solutions as we see from this example. So, it is not that simple your design is always a closed form answer which you get a unique number no ok. Let us move on to the next topic which we are interested now to discuss which is very closely relevant to marine structures is shear center. I can give a very interesting reference for the plastic analysis of structures. Please read this book if you have time. Mikkel Horney. Plastic analysis of structures. All the relevance of these theories are all discussed by the author. William Clouds and Sons Limited, London. P P 173. It is a good book for plastic analysis of structures. One more book is there, it will be slightly of an higher order, but still save and mess on it. There is double n here.
plates and shells. North Holland Publishing Company, London. I think this is design of plates, shells and discs. If you remember correctly, North Holland Publishing Company, London. These two references are very good for plastic analysis and design. You can go through them. Of course, the examples are not applicable directly to marine structures, but you can still find the members which are designed using this theory, and the discrepancies of different theories of failure are discussed here. So you can read it in the AWA. Okay. Now the question comes. What is shear center? How it is relevant to marine structures? Now, the most important factor in marine structures, the members are usually thin and asymmetric. Why thin? Because we are talking about buoyancy. We do not want to increase the payload, we do not want to increase the weight during installation, etcetera. We say thin. Thin does not mean that it is very, very thin. Okay. The thickness of the material in comparison to diameter is very small. That is d by t ratio is very small. Okay. It is not thin means this, that we are using a paper material like a paper, not like that. Okay. The thickness of the member compared to its diameter is very small, because we want a larger diameter for buoyancy effects. That is different and we want it for storage, for ballasting. There are very applications we have seen in the previous lectures of this module. So, we understand why we are talking about large diameter structures. Okay. So, we have a specific choice of material or member, which has thin cross sections, it means thickness of the material or the member is less. We have asymmetric cross sections, why? Because we are working on different geometric shapes, which can effectively disperse the wave loads. Okay. So, asymmetric. Now, when the axis of transverse loads axis means the line of action, I should say the line of action of transverse loads does not coincide with the centroid or center of gravity or mass center. of the cross section, then it induces additional moment and this moment will create torsional effect in the section that is the problem. And generally asymmetric sections thin sections are good in bending, but very weak in torsion. Okay. Now, the difference between the line of action of transverse force or transverse loads so, that of C g is what we call actually is a shear center. Okay. We will see this now here, the classical definition of shear center. Shear center is defined as the 
the intersection of longitudinal axis of the member with the line of action of transverse loads let us say I have a section some cross section asymmetric this may CG of the section this may W is it not W is nothing but the self weight of the section geometric weight okay. mass will act at this point whereas this point is what we call as the shear center because this is the point where my line of action of lateral loads are acting. Hmm? The difference between these two is what we call as E. It may lie inside the section, it may lie outside the section also. I will show you. It may lie somewhere here also. The shear center may lie here, it may lie outside also. So, if I say this is W and this is V R because this is a reaction of all the forces okay, transverse loads then additional moment cost is nothing but v r into and of course we know that v r will be equal to w for static equilibrium is it not they should match can be also said as w into so, our problem is for a given section what to do the value of E. So, what is the offset of the shear center from the centroid for a given section which is asymmetric. Now, the question obviously comes is if it is symmetric what will happen? If a section has both acts of symmetry if the cross section has I should put a word here fortunately both axis of symmetry or what I mean to say is the geometric shape of the cross section is symmetric about both the principal axis. The moment I say axis principal axis okay, principal axis then intersection of these, these means both these axis of symmetry is the shear center. So, we have no problem at all. For example, let us say a square, we have two axis of symmetry, this itself is the shear center, this itself is the geometric center or the mass center, no torsion, rectangle. You can identify two axes, so no problem. Circular, no problem. Annular, no problem. Now, the problems are L, P, channel, I with unequal flanges. is it not. So, all of them have only one axis of symmetry. For example, in this case is any axis of symmetry? Okay. In this case is any axis of symmetry? No axis of symmetry. You have one vertical axis of symmetry is it not. In this case you have one horizontal axis of symmetry. In this case you have both. Okay. If they are equal, if it is not equal then it is. In this case it is asymmetric to both the axis. So, if you have sections which has got both the axis of symmetry fortunately in a geometric shape, we have absolutely no problem shear center will become coinciding 
with that of the geometric center of the mass center or centroid. So, we have no difficulty of invoking an additional moment which will cause torsion in the cross section, there is no difficulty. So, for sections where there are two axes of symmetry, we need not have to bother about the shear center. So, we will talk about B case where sections have one axis of symmetry. So, the shear center will lie on that axis, but where it will lie? on this axis is it here here where. So, we have to locate the shear center, but the shear center will lie on that axis of symmetry one axis. So, we will take up an example where we have got sections I should say cross sections having one axis of symmetry that is the case what we are discussing. How to compute the shear center for this? So, we draw an example and try to derive this. The shape may be symmetric, but the thickness are different. Okay. So, let us say this is B 1, this is B 2, eleven very time rika killing fifteen minutes again class time rika. this is T 1, this is T 2, and I have somewhere the C here, and this is my principal axis. I call this as x and u, I will call this as y and v and this is my geometric central centroid O. And I call this as E one sorry and this as E two. Let us say the shear resistance of this flange is V 1 and of this flange is V 2 and I am neglecting the web. Okay. So, I should say that total load acting on the system will be now resisted only by V 1 and V 2 is equation number 1. We know shear stress is given by a general equation V A Y bar by I B. So, let us take the piece 1 here, 
and mark a strip of area above this let us consider the strip which is at a distance y and let us call this as d y. And area above this is what we call as a and area of this strip alone is what we call as d u. So, v is nothing but the shear force acting on the section at that time, a is the area above the level of consideration, y was the center of that area with respect to the line of consideration, i is the moment of inertia of the whole section and b is the width of the section under consideration. So, if I say the centroid of this area which I know is to be measured from here, this is what I should say as y bar as per the equation. Okay. So, let us expand this for member 1, I call this as member 1, this is member tau is v a y bar by i b. This total v which can be w, so I should say w a y bar by i b and in my case the breadth of the section reconsideration is T 1, I can say T 1. And what is the area of this piece? It is B 1 by 2 minus y eliminating the thickness. into T 1 that is the area is it not and of course, y bar is the distance of that from here this is the axis of symmetry for this problem is it not. So, y bar can be written as we already said this is y okay. so I can say y plus b 1 by 2 minus y of half of that is it okay? b 1 by 2 minus y eliminate the thickness of this very small d y is very very small of half of that that is what my distance of the centroid from here of the shaded area is it not substitute here and get tau. So, we know v that is w, we know a, we know y bar, i we written as i, t 1 is written as t 1. So, give me an expression for tau for member 1. So, w by 2 y b 1 square by 4 minus y square 
I call this equation number 2. You can simply when find out. In this case of course, I is moment of inertia of the entire cross section remember that about in my case going to be u u axis. Okay, it is not that path alone, it is whole section. So, I want to find V1, I know tau, remove this because I want I am interested in V1. So, V1 is going to be tau d a enter, is it not? So, w 2 y integral the value was b 1 square by 4 minus y square is that right. And d a is this area which is d 1. and we are looking for the whole member. So, from this point we should say minus b 1 by 2 2 plus b 1 by 2 or 0 to b 1 by 2 twice of that both ways it is ok. Integrate and get me this quickly. you get w by i t 1 b 1 q by 12 to simplify. I can always say this equation as w by t sorry w by i into i 1 where i 1 is the moment of inertia of this section alone about this axis which is T 1 B 1 Q by 12 is that ok. Call the equation number 3 I think is that ok. So, similarly I can always say V 2 please do it instead of B 1 you will get B 2 you will do the same exercise again it will be w by i of i 2 where i 2 is t 2 b 2 q by 2. Now, total v I am neglecting the v by this web only flanges ok. So, total v as we see from equation 1 is v 1 plus v 2 which is w by i of i 1 plus i 2 is that ok. Which is also equal to w. So, what does it mean this implies that the total moment of inertia is only sum of i 1 plus i 2, web is neglected remember that because web also has a moment of inertia 
which will be this dimension e 1 plus e 2 minus t 1 by 2 minus t 2 this, this dimension. If I know this is x 1, x 1 p q by 12 okay, that thickness is very very small we can neglect it that is why we are getting this relationship. Okay. Then taking moment about this point C, V 1 into E 1 is V 2 into E 2. So, you know the relationship between E 1 and E 2. Okay. For a given section of course, this dimension is known to me, is known to me. Therefore, if E 1 is known, I can find E 2. V 1 and V 2 are already known to me. How? V 1 is nothing but, what is V 1? W by I of I 1. I 1 is known to me, I is known to me, W is given to me, I can find V 1. Similarly, V 2. So, I can get the ratio of E 1 and E 2, okay. I can express 1 and find E 1. So, I can locate the shear centre in the given cross section. Okay. This is one example where the section is symmetric about one axis, it is not symmetric about the other one because the thickness are different. Okay. So, in that case how will you locate my shear centre? So, there are two things we have answered in this lecture. One, few design examples understanding that how the selection of diameter for a given simple example can vary when you apply different theories of failure. The second is what is the shear center, what is its importance in geometric design for marine structures. When the sections have fortunately two axis of symmetry, principal axis of symmetry then we have no problem at all shear center will be coinciding with the centroid of the section. If it is not then there will be a problem of an inducing an additional moment which is torsion generally thin asymmetric sections as we select to choose for marine structures are very good in bending, but they are very weak in torsion. So, whenever a section is subjected to an additional moment which is torsion, we must locate the shear centre and check for its shear stress exceedance in their permissive limits. So, this is one of the important aspect of design in marine structural members. In the next example, next class we will take a few more examples of shear centre and try to solve one or two more sections, then we will move on to the design check for members as suggested by different codes. Okay.